Good morning, faithful listeners. You have tuned in to the P40 Ministries podcast, the one place where you can get a daily explanatory Bible reading to start your day strong. This is your host, Jen, bringing you a brand new episode out of Matthew. Hey, friends and faithful listeners, happy Tuesday. Hope you're having a fantastic morning. And thank you so much for tuning in to the P40 Ministries podcast. Um, I am Jen, your host here, and we will be discussing Matthew chapter 14 today, verses 13 through 21. And this is the story of Jesus feeding the 5,000. This is a very, very famous story and one that is often taught in Sunday schools, isn't it? I remember hearing this story when I was just a tiny little kid in sitting in my Sunday school class. I do remember hearing about this one, and I can't remember. We did some sort of craft that went along with it. but um, <laughs> So I actually do remember learning about this when I was a little kid. But um, let's go ahead and start reading. I will be reading uh, the W.E.B. version of the Bible this morning. Also, I wanted to apologize for yesterday. I forgot to mention what verses we were reading out of in Genesis. <laughs> and I kind of just made you guys assume when we would stop reading. So sorry about that. That was completely my fault. Um, but I hope you enjoyed yesterday's podcast episode with Beth. She was great. I loved having her on P40 Ministries. It was so fun to share um, that episode with her. And you can go back and listen to that if you haven't yet. Definitely check it out. I encourage you guys to do that. But let's uh, read Matthew 14, verses 14 through 21. Jesus went out and he saw a great multitude. He had compassion on them and healed their sick. When evening had come, his disciples came to him, saying, This place is deserted, and the hour is already late. Send the multitudes away that they may go into the villages and buy themselves food. But Jesus said to them, They don't need to go away. You give them something to eat. They told him, We only have here five loaves and two fish. He said, Bring them here to me. He commanded the multitudes to sit down on the grass, and he took the five loaves and the two fish, and he took the five loaves and the two fish, and looked up to heaven. He blessed, broke, and gave the loaves to his disciples, and the disciples gave it to the multitudes. They all ate and were filled. They took up twelve baskets full of that which remained left over from the broken pieces. Those who ate were about five thousand men, in addition to women and children. The first thing that stood out to me in this passage was actually the very first verse, that Jesus saw the great multitude, and when he saw them, he had compassion on them, and he healed their sick. You do remember from... Thursday's episode, we talked about John the Baptist dying. And when John the Baptist died, Jesus went out and went to a deserted place. And he often did that to pray to the Father, which is why I believe that he was going to a deserted place in order to do that, in order to pray to his father and have some alone time with his dad. But um, all of a sudden, all these multitudes come to him because they always are trying to follow him everywhere because he has these great miracles. In all honesty, the crowds are using Jesus for his ability to perform miracles. They're using him. They many times don't want to hear what he has to say. Jesus often says that his his time period is going to be condemned because of the hardness of the people's hearts. And he's not just talking about Pharisees. He's talking about anybody that can hear the truth, see the truth, see the miracles being done, and still choose not to believe, which was many, many people. So Jesus has compassion on these people. And there's other verses in the Bible that say that Jesus sees these people as sheep without a shepherd. And he has compassion on them because of that. So it says after that, that he heals their sick. But then when evening comes, his disciples come to him and they're like, okay, well, we're in a deserted place right now. It's getting really late. So we should send the multitudes away so that they can go and buy food in the nearby villages. But Jesus, having compassion on these demanding people who won't leave him alone for a second, says to his disciples, they don't need to go away. You should give them something to eat. And then they say to him, 
Well, we only have five loaves and two fish. And we know from the book of John that these five loaves and two fish actually came from a little boy that was in the crowd. So out of all these multitudes of people that were there, one little boy had a lunch with him who was willing to give it to Jesus to distribute to the people. Even the disciples didn't have any bread or fish or any kind of food on them whatsoever. They often, I'm sure, trusted in Jesus to provide for them. So they didn't carry a lot with them either. And also Jesus kind of commanded them not to carry a lot with them. And this was just an exercise for the disciples to build trust in God to provide for all of their needs. So when the disciples say they don't have any food, they really don't have any food. I'm sure that there were some in the crowd that were very, very poor, that probably didn't expect a big meal from Jesus and his disciples, and probably didn't really have the money to go and buy food at the villages anyway. Jesus probably knew this, but he had compassion on everybody. He takes these two fish and these five loaves of bread, and he blesses them. He breaks them and gives the loaves to his disciples, and then the disciples gave them to the multitudes. But before he does this, he commands everybody to sit down. And I was actually reading the Enduring Word Bible commentary, and something they said was kind of cool that I never thought about before. But when Jesus commands them to sit down, he was almost like offering them a banquet of sorts. You know, they could have stood up and ate and, you know, been filled that way. But no, he wanted them all to sit down and enjoy the food that he was about to give them. Jesus was really big about eating with people. You can see that many times in the Bible where he goes and has meals with people. You know, he ate with the tax collectors and the sinners. So now he wants to eat with this great multitude of people that are there with him. So he commands them to sit down. He's like, sit down. I'm going to feed you guys. So they see this miracle taking place before their very eyes. And they see Jesus distributing just tons of bread and tons of fish to all these disciples and then giving them to the people. One last thing I want to comment here is the fact that he used his disciples to do this. You know, Jesus could have distributed it to everybody, but he he often works through people. He works through people all the time. And he's working through his disciples to, to have them distribute the bread and the fish. On top of this, he wanted the disciples to be compassionate towards these people the same way that he was. And we know this from verse 16, when he says, we don't have to send the multitudes away. You feed them. You. He says you specifically. And then he specifically makes his disciples literally go out and feed them. (laughs) So this was probably an object lesson to the disciples that not only does God provide for everybody, but also they need to have compassion and go out and feed people. In fact, now that I've said that, there's actually a verse coming to my mind. It's in John, where Jesus, after he is resurrected, talks to Peter and says to Peter three different times, feed my sheep. So this is just more of Jesus wanting Peter to have compassion and to feed his sheep. You know, these people are sheep without a shepherd. And now they're getting fed by the disciples and by Jesus. And that's what Jesus calls us to do, to have compassion on people, to love people, to feed people. And not just in a, in a food sense, though we can do that as well, but in a spiritual sense to feed people what they need, and that is the bread of life. In verse 20, the multitudes ate, and they were filled to the max, it says. They were bursting. They had so much food in them. They were super happy. Many of them might not have even eaten that day or even the day before, possibly. So I'm sure many of them were very, very hungry. And they were filled with this bread that the disciples served them and that Jesus provided for them. This was a great, great miracle they were seeing taking place right before them. Also in verse 20, it says that 12 baskets of food were left over. So not only is Jesus providing for the multitudes, but he's providing for his 12 disciples as well. It's possible that those disciples were able to take a basket home each and provide for their own families. So Jesus provides for the multitudes and then also gives the disciples 
baskets of food afterward, though that is my own opinion. It doesn't say if the disciples took them home or not, but I always believed that since there were 12 baskets and also 12 disciples that each disciple was able to take a basket home to their family and their family members and to conclude in verse 21 it says that those who ate were about 5,000 men as well as women and children so there were 5,000 men there but there were also women and children there so we don't know how big this crowd was we could assume it's close to 10,000 people that Jesus fed if, if you're including women and children as well. So this miracle just shows the loving kindness of Jesus and how compassionate he is, how loving he is, how he provides for everybody and in all situations and then provides for his disciples as well. Jesus really is the best. <laughs> but um, thank you guys for tuning in. Definitely join me tomorrow for an episode out of Genesis that will take place at 6 a.m. I also encourage you guys to go to my t-shirt shop and take a look at the designs before they go. I have some limited edition Valentine's Day designs in the t-shirt shop right now that I uh, hope you guys will take a look at before they go away. They're really cute in my opinion, but I also will have some Easter designs coming up pretty soon as well. So if you miss out on the limited edition Valentine's Day designs, you can look forward to the Easter ones as well. But friends, I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day. Happy listening and God bless. Mm-hmm.